Shocker, that was the first question. Is Naomi still working for you? You see, I've got 100% of my office staff outside and I don't know what they're doing. You spin around, you'll see what I mean. In a sort of discreet... <laughs> very discreet. <laughs> oh, discreet. Like, where are they going? Look now, look, look, look. They're going now. It's like a sort of play day family outing here, you know? 100% of my office staff have left and I've got absolutely no fucking clue where they've gone. Anyway, welcome back to the channel. This is for the mounts. You buy things d deliberately for a Renault Master or a Ford Transit and they don't fit because the, the, the manufacturers make so many different sub models within that model. They don't fit and this is one of them. This is actually the, um, the docking station for the Tough Book. Uh, nothing worse than having a laptop and, and sort of balanced on the steering wheel. So I actually have a docking station and I bought the mount kit for it, but it doesn't actually fit this. It, it sort of fits, but it doesn't fit. So let me just file this end down. When I get in the van, you'll see it all come. You'll see what I'm on about. Okay, so that bolts onto there. Washer. There is a theory behind this. Washer, washer, washer. That's better. Okay, so that swings around there. Okay. So that is, I've got to wire it in yet, but that's sort of the idea. And you can just swing it out of the way when you don't need it. So that's the, the dock for the tough book. In fact, let me go and put my tough book in it. I actually tried that yet. That's the plan. Okay, that's better. Yeah, so this is, it's actually a Ram tough book dock. I found some seller who was, uh, you can only get them in America for some reason. And it's not the, mind you, I would explain it. It's not actually the Renault Master. It's their equivalent of the Renault Master which is why probably this, this here was too tall. I had to cut it down for some reason. So yeah, that's the idea. It's just much easier when you're on lunch or something, you want to fill out job sheets, reports or anything like that. I can just do it straight on this now. So it just makes life a little bit easier. But then when you're finished, you just slide it. Which way? <laughs> Back on the bus. That's it. And then you just slide it out of the way when you're done with it. And then I can still drive. Excellent. Right, all I've got to do is set up the power for that. I've got to put the power in. I don't even know where the fuse board is on this thing. I have to find out. But that's the plan. And then you can just undock it by, that's it, lifting it out. And then you just leave that piece in place. So that's the plan. But I love me tough book. That is, uh, it was a choice between a tough book or I was going to get like, um, so like a, not a MacBook, but um, like an iPad or something. But on balance, for the amount of abuse that I, that you give a a laptop and this was definitely the right investment they are bulky and heavier but they just they fit better in this environment i think so right so that's that in right okay we're doing a special video replying to comments now we're going to do this video with a slight twist i don't know what the comments are the camera guy is going to send me them to my phone and i shall reply to them spontaneously right Shocker, that was the first question. Is Naomi still working for you? No, she's not. Um, I try to avoid very much talking about ex-employees because they are, uh, when they, when employees start here, they're under a contract. They sign a contract, very standard, what you normally get when you work anywhere. Uh, we have um, slightly different contracts, but essentially when somebody leaves, for whatever reason, good, bad, indifferent, I can't speak about them any longer. So that's why I don't talk about it. The most I could literally sit here and say is that she's gone off. It was very amicable, I'd like to point out, but she's gone off to go and do something. Um, I know what that something is, I just can't say what it is. But she's gone off and it was uh, very amicable. Yeah. Ollie Hudson, any chance of a company update? How many employees, vans, your unit, etc.? Feels like a lot has been happening. Yes, a lot has been happening. Uh, that's actually an exceptionally good question. Um, well, let's start with the beginning of that. Uh, any chance of a company update? It's going well. It's, it would explain my absence on social media, which we are trying to get back into. We now have the camera guy back here full time. Hope, well, I say hope. We are, is he back for you? He, he's sort of back full time. Um, but it is going well. There's just been a lot going on and trying to get all of this off the ground honestly has been a monumental headache. But it is good. I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic. How many employees? Well, we have at the moment, myself, we've got Sarah and Vanita who are up in the office as we speak. Um, and we have Joe and James and myself out on the road. So including the camera guy, I make that six of us. Uh, vans. Okay, well, vans, uh, we've got the bucket truck, which has turned up. Bloody Walsh driving past. We've got the bucket truck, which has now turned up, uh, which is going to be for 
uh, mixed works. It's going to be doing highway work. It'll be doing general sort of access work. We've still got both the black vans and we've got the little Kangoo, which is coming back this Thursday. Matt Moody. Tom's channels used to be one of my favorites. Unfortunately, I feel it's lost its buzz. It's just not the same as it used to be. I'll still watch as you can see the effort, but it's becoming harder to watch. Um, in fact, what are the replies? Yeah, agreed. Madge Bishop, yeah, agreed. Considering he's nearly at 100,000 subs, there's zero interaction with his viewers, sporadic uploads and really short videos. Madge, have you seen what I'm trying to do here? My friend, okay? I, I don't like making enemies, but really, okay? Please, for just, just the briefest of moments, <laughs> just understand what's happening here. I'm sat here next to 20 traffic cones, work signs, vans. I've got people upstairs, people out on the road trying to do this as well. Honestly, it's just, I cannot even begin to, to try to explain how many moving parts there are in this machine. It's just, the more you grow, the more and more moving parts you get. And it just, it honestly, there are people who say, who say like, oh, why have you got two staff upstairs in the office? That's completely ridiculous. It's not. Hold, just hold on. Now this is the HERS handbook. Now we're trying to get our, we're, we've almost, we're tantalizing close to our HERS registration. I cannot tell you how many gray hairs that has caused me, okay? And the bottom line is, it's not, I don't want to interact, it's just down to time. Because honestly, one thing I've learned is that any company that can display that logo, they've seriously got their shit together. Because that's just, I cannot tell you how hard that's been. And we're almost there. But like all of this just creates, it's not, you are right, there is zero interaction. But there's zero interaction because I just don't have time. I mean, to give you a gauge, the camera guy's just got the, his fucking road sweeper. <laughs> to wait for the road sweep to go by. He's mocking us. I wonder if he's Madge Bishop. <laughs> but yeah, look, um, is there more I could do to interact with viewers? Of course there is. Um, will it happen? Yes, it will. But it's just one of those things, it just takes time. Ah, oh, Coyote. I can always rely on Coyote to give some, some feedback. He's slowly going bust, yeah. It's actually interesting. When somebody puts a comment that they don't like what they see, all the other people who think I'm a dick all start commenting below, and they're generally the only ones. Um, he seems like a cock. <laughs> Just because you've got a small willy, don't take it out on me, all right? Uh, G-Man, need more regular content, sir. Great work, though. Um, yeah, it is, it is slowly getting there, bit by bit. It's just a, it's just a slow process. Um, this is what I'm on about. You know, people are like, oh, why can't you get more content out? This is why. More regular content, yeah. Uh, just to summarize, we are working on it. There is actually, there's a whole bunch of content on a hard drive here. We just haven't got around to cutting it and putting it out. But it is, it's in the pipeline. It's just a work in progress. Richard Jizz Blaster, Nick Bundy, I've got a unit. Thomas Nagy, hold my beer. I didn't realize we were measuring dick sizes with this whole thing. I mean, I'm just, you know, I don't even know what to respond to that. I mean, considering most of the other sparks on YouTube fucking hate me, I'm... <laughs> and the weird thing is, I don't know why, I don't get it. Because like, I actively, literally don't, I don't, I don't really have anything to do with them. In fact, I don't even recall ever saying anything about them on my channel, so I don't really understand. They seem to have all collaborated together in this mutual fucking hate of me. I don't quite understand why, but... Yeah, I didn't realize we were measuring dick sizes on this. Next question. Mike's electric. Instead of cabinets, which would need, which need to be unloaded, why not use a bin box? It can just be put in the van. Yes, um, you actually are already on the right lines because, hold that thought. You're already on the right lines. We are using uh, tubs. So right, this, again, what you were saying is absolutely right because this is a work in progress. We're just sort of finding we're trying to fine tune what works and a lot of it is just trial and error. But yeah, for things like materials, we've kind of, actually since that last video and this video, we stopped using the cabinets because like you say, tubs work better. They can just put what they want in the tubs, chuck them in the van and then go, go off to work. Andy T, when up in the bucket, use a magnetic parts tray dish so you can screw, so you can screw, etc. stick to it. Yes, unfortunately it's fiberglass, so I can't, I can't stick anything to it, but I was, yeah. 
you can buy, I was actually looking on eBay, you can buy like metal trays, which you just screw on, and I might just end up doing that. But a couple of you did reach out about 3D printers. You were prepared to print out something with a 3D printer, and I will reach out to you, I just haven't got around to it yet. Uh, again, just getting back to emails and stuff is really difficult. But yes, something like that, you're on the right lines, I think, definitely. We've not had any just callous abuse yet, actually, we're doing quite well. <laughs> The room of peace and zen looks rather similar to a casting couch. I was wondering how long it would take before somebody said that. Um, yeah, I don't know what... <laughs> I'm not sure what to say back to that. Tim Cook, if you do buy another lift, have a look at the Unimog ones. They are so cool, but you need a HGV license, unfortunately. Yes, um, it's, it was one of the reasons we got this one in the end. Versalift do do the Unimog ones uh, with the twin buckets. But they are, when we actually, when me and the camera guy went up to the Versalift factory, they were doing them, I think they're like 250, 300,000 quid, massive money. But they are huge. I mean, one tire, honestly, is the height of this truck. I mean, they're massive, beautiful bits of kit. But that was the reason I stuck with this one, because it was still three and a half tonne. But I have got the capacity to upgrade it to four tons if I want to but once you go over three and a half tons that puts you in HGV territory but I just that's why I got it just gives me the best of both worlds I can have it as a just normal PL private light goods and if I want to upgrade it for an extra half a ton payload which I might want in the future I can do that if I need if I, if needs must fire blaster I haven't seen a petrol station jet wash episode in a while no you haven't seen one of those but I do have a tap out here now so we'll do uh we will do like unit washing updates we, yeah jet wash episodes well we'll do unit jet wash episodes instead they will be coming soon there's a lot coming soon i promise you john casey eggleton sorry if i haven't pronounced that right tom that's got to be the most tragic office desk for the owner of a company <laughs> tom wants to sit down no i don't want to sit down i actually don't care because like i wanted to have that whole office as my office and like a big sort of gangster style desk but in reality I'm never I'm just I'm never ever going to use it. it I hate sitting in that office honestly Sarah and Benita argue with me over it can you come upstairs and do paperwork and I'm like sorry I've got to go you know and I, I hate sitting up there I don't like sitting I just I don't really mind having a desk that to be honest most of my work I do it over there in by the kitchen when I've got to do paperwork and stuff, that's where I do it. I, I avoid the office at all costs. So yeah, I don't mind if that's my desk because I never use it anyway. Chris Jeffrey, why so secretive about the cameraman? You've even blurred him out. He blurred himself out. Uh, I think he blurred himself out during editing. You're absolutely right. Yes, of course. I'm just curious. Is he some secret government agent, a wanted criminal? Tom never refers to him by name. He could just be... <laughs> I don't know. We just, uh, yeah, I mean, actually, he's, he's a top secret asset to the company, so it's, it's not in my interest to disclose who he is. Joseph King, nice sign, but Thomas Naji, what? Porn studio? I'm surprised you didn't put your Twitter name under it since it's on the side of the vans. It will not be on the side of the vans for much longer. Um, there is good reason for wanting to do all of this. Um, I've just decided that it's not the way I want the company to go. Uh, I want it to go in a different direction. And this actually goes back to the, there is a point to this, this goes back to the very first question where people were saying, where's Naomi? As a company grows, not everybody who's in the company wants to go in that direction. And that's perfectly natural. And as a company grows, generally when you get rounds of funding, that's when you see it the most. So when you get a cash injection from an investor or something, Generally, that's when some people leave because they don't like the direction that the company's going in or it doesn't suit them. Um, I know Naomi didn't like heights. She wasn't, she, when we did our IPAF, I know she wasn't, a, I, I can't say much more than that, but I know she just wasn't a fan of heights. Now, obviously, you know, you're going to be 10 metres up changing a street head. That's the nature of the beast. You can't do anything about it. So um, there were other reasons and stuff, but a lot of it is just when, you know, when people come and go, that's perfectly natural. Um, I think it's actually, it's not, it's very unusual to have a company where all of the people at the beginning stay. Uh, like Dave, I mean, he left, he left, God, ages ago. Um, that's just, I mean, there's still people now asking where he is. <laughs> people just come and go when, when it doesn't fit anymore or for whatever reason. Uh, but no, going back to your question about the name and the branding, we're changing it, that's why, because we're just moving in a different direction. And I don't want to, I just don't like the way the branding is at the moment. 
Jonas Geist, really interesting point, mate. Could you talk about how to find a good Sparky for jobs? What should you look out for to avoid cowboys like that? Yeah, I mean, I actually can't, I can't remember the video directly where this comment came from, but to be honest, I think, I mean, price is a big factor. Price is a really big factor in any sort of quotes, estimates. And this is a very general statement, so don't, don't take it for gospel. But I've always found that when you see companies that can do absolutely everything, I generally find they're just the ones to stay away from. And you see it on uh, builders especially, when you look at their vans as they drive past, they'll do plumbing, heating, tiling, roofing, drainage, guttering, fencing, sheds, they do everything. And I'm just like, how can you possibly be good, at, you know, really good at all of those things? You can't, it's just, I don't see how it's possible. Or you subcontract the work out to people who are good at it. But the problem is there's somebody in the middle then taking a cut. So that's one thing, just be wary of what they can and can't do and their limitations, but also price. I mean, I was saying this, in fact, this is coming up in a video shortly. Uh, we quoted for a job in Chelsea. It was a little flat, uh, it was a one bedroom flat rewire we did. Uh, we never got the job, we quoted for it, six and a half grand. Uh, the client got another price of 2,750. I never saw the job, but yeah, you can fill in the blanks why, yeah, I mean, I understand he, he put the first fix cabling in. When they went to do the second fix, he realized he left a whole bunch of cabling out. And I think he was there. Uh, uh, it was a communal block and it was a very posh in the middle of Chelsea, very posh block. We quoted high for it because it was just such a difficult place. Because you've got, there's so many factors you've got to take in. Parking, you won't get any change out of 100, 150 quid a day. Um, you can't use the main entrance, the concierge, fucking hate, they just hate contractors with a passion. So you have to go around the back, you're not allowed to use lifts, it was on like the eighth floor. So there's all these factors, which is where the price goes up. And to do a job like that for 2750, it just, it can't be done, it, it really can't. I'd, I'd have loved to have actually gone in there and seen the work afterwards, because when you take the price down, you have to cut something, you've got to cut something out, something has to give. And invariably, it's corners, you just have to cut, you have to cut something, and most people end up cutting corners. So yeah, pricing, super important. Or if they want to be paid in onions, that's bad as well. You know? I do it for 100 pounds and you pay me in onions. <laughs> uh, anyone get the feeling his employees don't particularly like him? Um, <laughs> what am I supposed to put back to that? No, they fucking hate me, I don't know. One thing I have learned, and this genuinely is one thing I've learned. There has to be a clear boundary. And as soon as you blur that boundary, that's when every, I can fucking tell you, every time that is when things go wrong. When you blur that boundary, everything becomes gray, murky, and very difficult, especially when something goes wrong. It's a really fine line to tread because as soon as, if you become friends and everything's pally and all laughs and yeah, yeah, come in a bit late, or yeah, yeah it's absolutely fine. Yeah. As soon as anything goes wrong, it just becomes really difficult because you've, you've crossed that boundary into sort of a gray territory. I will provide as many facilities as I can to make it as pleasant and as inviting as possible. So whether they like me or dislike me, I couldn't care less. It's not about that. It's about they're paid to be here to do a job. And if they can't do that job, then it's time to go. Yeah, <clears throat> I'm sure that'll. <laughs> oh my God, that's an appalling way to be. It's fucking not, that's just how it is. I remember at Colston's, this is absolutely true, just going off on a tangent. When I was working at Colston's, there was a guy there called John March. He was one of the directors. That guy scared the shit out of me. I literally, I was scared to go in his office, but he knew full well, it's not a personal thing. It's just business, it's straight. There's no, there's no niceties. You're there to do a job. And if you didn't do that job, you were out the fucking door. I was on the receiving end of his rage on more than one occasion. He was a fucking scary guy, but he knew that it was just, don't make friends, you are paid to do a job. There's a reason why it was a multi-million pound company, you know? <laughs> have you had new teeth? Looking good. Um, actually, interestingly enough, I have switched toothpaste. No. <laughs> I've switched to a charcoal toothpaste. I use Arm & Hammer, let me get it right, hang on, it's Arm & Hammer charcoal bicarb, that's it. Uh, it's, it's like a charcoal toothpaste. Uh, the camera, I believe he's Googling it right now. It's very good, actually, I, I recommend it, yeah. So if they look a little whiter, maybe that's the reason why. I'd never pay for tooth whitening. 
<laughs> I won't pay 20 quid for a traffic cone. <laughs> what, makes you, what makes anyone think I'm going to pay for tooth whitening? <laughs> Kieran, Haldane, Knob. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> okay.